<laughs> yes, people, what's going on? Welcome to the Stretford Paddock. I'm Adam McCullough. Here's Mr. Stephen Ass, and we're here inside Old Trafford. You've already seen, hopefully, our reaction to the game. Manchester United against Real Vallecano, 1-1 in the end. United's final pre-season game. Um, now we're going to wrap up pre-season. What are the pros? What are the cons of pre-season? We've had how many games? Six games. Uh, we lost one. We drew two. We won three. Um, England have just scored, if you want to know in the Euros, that's why that one I know people about? are going crazy around us. Um, but yeah, Manchester United's pre-season. They definitely um, could hear that. There was a little tiny squeal and we all went, oh, it's the, people are still yeah. watching the game in the box. Well, they can see you're distracted, so they know that you're distracted and anyway. It could have been boobs. Could, it could have been, it could have been. Um, big tits out there. <laughs> that's Cam by the way. <laughs> um, but Manchester United's pre-season. What were the pros for you of that pre-season? Because there were a lot of positives for me anyway. Changing the style of play, which we hoped we would see, we did see. Um, slight change in um, mentality. I think the mentality shift was bigger than anything else. We've seen us play with that level of intensity infrequently. Ralph tried it, Oli tried it. You know, we, we've seen that. We've also seen United look like the Harlem Bastard Globetrotters under Louis on pre-season. <laughs> so I don't think you want to get too carried away with performances on pre-season. It's better to, to be impressed with what you're seeing and positive about what you're seeing than just getting dunked on every week and going, well, it's only pre-season, it doesn't matter. Because ultimately, it does matter. There's a happy, nice, feel-good factor going into the season. It's ended with a couple of less than perfect results, granted, but that's probably a good thing. I also kind of feel we needed that, didn't we? Like, you know, you it's all well and good winning every game, but they're also, I've actually thought the game that we lost against Atletico Madrid, the first 55, 60 minutes was our best performance of pre-season, yeah, in my opinion. When you play athletic, you choose to play Atletico Madrid, not because you're going to crush it, not because you're going to have an open end to end game of football. You're in for an absolute stinker um, of a hard game and that you're going to have to work for it. And I did not expect us to create the level of chances that against, we did. Yeah, against a very, so very solid team that's defensively. That's and they were playing full, full bloody, flying into a lot of challenges, look at the 11. making it difficult I for us. I think their 11 was better than us. No, no, even when he had players coming off the bench, he had Griezmann coming off the bench, Saul, etc. It was a difficult team that we played against, that, that Atletico side. And I thought our performance in that game, particularly the first opening 60 minutes, were our best performance of the tour. One of the main pros for me has been that front three. Obviously, the way we're working and the way we're playing and creating opportunities. You look at the opportunity Luke Shaw created for Sancho in one of the games and he whipped it back and everybody was involved in that. You look at the other one that Danny van der Beek and Martial cut back for Rashford. Everyone was involved. Like some of the goals have been really pleasing, and yeah, that front three have been goals. good together, haven't they? Yeah, I think that's a massive pro. In terms of the negatives, I think the the only negatives that I can think of is the the squad depth has been shown up a few times. Um, even though it's been great to see like Zidane and Charlie getting out there and, and getting some minutes, and and today we've just seen um, even more players, Isaac Hansen, getting involved, and Ahmad actually looked quite good when he came on as well, and Shoratire uh, getting some time. Guy Nacho looking like he's ready to fight yeah, for Gar a spot. Guy Nacho looked great. Finally got to see him. So those have all been positives, but ultimately, like, can you honestly believe that we can go and take on Liverpool and City? Which has with, to be the aim. Yeah, with those players, and I think you'd be mega. Some of them players might end up world class, right? But they're not guaranteed and they're not there yet. So to say that you would be confident in doing that is just crazy. Yeah. So it's exciting to see them given an opportunity, yeah. but and when they are given an football. opportunity, there's a problem ultimately because there should be quality first team players Correct. in that squad already. And that's one of the things for me, if you look at the front three, whilst it's been amazing to watch them together and the, some of the football they're playing, it's so thin. Like today we saw, against Real Vallecano, we saw we saw a, a second string team. And if you look at it, we had Garnacho, Ronaldo, who's probably not going to be here, and Chung, who's not good enough. Chung, Chung really put an advert for getting a championship loan or something this season, because like, <laughs> there's no way that any team in the Premier League wants to be taking him. It must be 5 0 to England, the amount of screaming that's going on there. <laughs> it's just uh, a replay every time a goal. Every time the replay goes, we just celebrate again. I've been that drunk again. <laughs> Do you know what? We played Zagazeg once in about 2000. Zagazeg? Yeah, do you remember? About we lost 1 0 first leg. Was it here? No, we, we lost away. We played them here. It was a Champions League qualifier or something like that. Remember when we had to fuck about with them? And I thought Forlan had scored. And for those who aren't aware of the history, Forlan did not score right? for a long fucking time. <laughs> 
And that's how drunk <coughs> Lloyd used to do four shots for a five. Remember them days? Ooh. I mean, to be fair, it was 20 years ago. That's how old I am. <laughs> and I sat up there. I don't know why I sat up there, because I never used to sit up there. And I sat up there with a few of the lads, and we've been at a Lloyd's bar, and we've just done this all in, like whatever, four top shelf bingo, bosh, get them in one drink. Fucking ruined by the time I got here. Got home, woke up, I was still living at my dad's. Fucking fall on yesterday, because it was in pre season, wasn't it? I think it might have been the year we'd signed Rio, just. And fall I think that was the first. The day I remember Rio making his debut in the white shirts that we had away from home. I remember the white one with the red game. triangle in was the middle. That? I don't know. Either way, day, I thought Diego Forlan scored, and he did not. He just looked at me and was like, "How much did you fucking?" That happened to me once. I was sat there in the East End. Uh, we played Arsenal, we beat them two one. Our Shabin scored, and Van Persie scored towards the end of the game. It was ruled out for offside, but I was so drunk I went home thinking we drew two two. <laughs> I just literally did not see that count. Yeah, talking about pros of the preseason, and we're talking about getting one, drunk. One Larry, to, um... Larry Whitwell was oh. one of the pro pros oh. of the tour. Was it? Yeah, he's he's a dark horse. He's <laughs> a very dark horse. So he he's looks one like, of the pros of the tour. He looks tour. like a fucking nerdy boy band character. He still no, he definitely does, but he's on it. We also discovered he looks like a young Gary Rhodes on the tour. Gary Rhodes, a chef. chef. Yeah. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah, there's a there's That's there's niche. a there's a picture. That's but anyway, niche. forget Larry Whitwell and uh, drinking and all that. Um, pros of the tour. We're saying the front three, we're saying the style of play, we've started to develop on that. Do you think we look a bit better defensively? Maybe, but not definitely. Maybe. Um, we're, we're obviously playing a lot higher line. There's complications and, and weaknesses that you get exposed when you do do that. Dude. The midfield for me is the worry still because obviously we saw yesterday against Atletico you're still seeing Fred and McTominay suiting up as first choice players. We need to stop mentioning them together. I no, think I it's know, unfair but, on Fred. Okay, it is. But still, even though Fred had a good game I thought against Atletico despite the red card, yeah. even though Fred had a good game, I still don't want to see him start for United. True. So, uh, yes, they, they do And at the moment you in. go Fred, Bruno, Eriksen, right? Yeah, it's, at the moment it's like if you try and book Deck instead of Anne. Can you imagine? They like they come together. Like they, no, one it's like when there, you one turn up there. at me somewhere. Yeah. Like they, you have to book them together, that's the rule. So Fred and McTominay, unfortunately, are Ant and Deck of our midfield. And you have to play one of them or, or both of them or none of them. And at the moment, we're playing both of them because that's all we've got. I think Eriksen, Eriksen might squeeze one of them out, but which one? Mm. Because obviously they, they both do have um, I think Fred's qualities got... that keep them in the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need that player that does that job though, don't we? We really, really need that. And now those are the cons. You're looking at the midfield, it's still not been sorted. We lost Pogba, we lost uh, Matic. And what, with four lost... managers deep with those two playing? And they still get picked. There's a yeah. reason. Yeah. There's a re there's not. People there's keep not saying there's a that reason that they play, like as if that means they're good. No, no, no it's just not. <laughs> the reason why they no, play is because we haven't sorted it they out. Do have, but they do have qualities that. Yo, Donny doesn't have... Yeah, like, if we had first choice, have. you look at Fred and McTominay and go, good squad players, if we had our first choice midfield, oh, but I when you no, haven't... I'd have no danger with McTominay or Fred sitting on the bench week in, week out, not a problem, because that would mean someone, you know, like a, a Frankie maybe, or, or, or if you had someone like a Kante even, was playing week in, week out, and them guys coming in to replace that, no danger, yeah, you have a nice problem. Yeah, that's happy days, but unfortunately, week in, week out, McTominay and Fred are currently Manchester United's first choice in that very, very vital, important part of the pitch. Mm. And we're trying to be a ball playing football team with two lads whose weakness is playing the ball. Mm. That's not good. Yeah, we need to sort that out. So look, we definitely need to sort the midfield out. We need more depth in attack, that's for sure. Yes. You know, whether that's a, replay, uh, a backup striker, some wingers, I'm not surprised to see us link with the likes of Anthony, Sesco, etc. Um, and obviously the transfer yeah. business we've done, yeah, so we need two attackers, a striker, a winger, and a midfielder. What about the business that we've done? The business we've done at the moment looks good. Ericsson was a great buy, and I've just got a text off Cam saying there's a mix zone, so let's wrap this up and go find him. Um, there is, um, he's been a good buy. I think he's a great addition to the squad. Lissandro Martinez. Martinez looks fucking moosted today. Um, Malasia, you know, in with a shout with man of the match yesterday. The positive additions. Starts the season as on a Positive like additions, but you've got to bring in a striker if Ronaldo goes, and arguably even if he stays. But definitely if he goes, but you could even make the case if he stays. And you've you've got to bring in someone in the field. No, that, and Joe, you know end the video there because that is it. You can't even argue with that. You, you could bring in a right back if you don't think uh, Delo is up to start. 
But I think you've got to keep hold of Ethan Laird because he was meant to. Yeah, in, in summary, there's been a lot of positives, few cons, but we need to get this transfer window right before the window closes because Ten Hag needs to be back for all the positives he's done. He needs the support. So guys, subscribe, like, comment, share, keep it locked. Let us know your thoughts on the pre-season going into the new campaign starting next week. Remember, we'll keep you covered through it all. See you in a bit. 99, keep it more tight.